markets research. So Emily, where do you stand? So I think I would echo what a lot of these CEOs said in Davos this week. We are seeing a slowdown in terms of global economic growth, but it's a bit of a mixed bag. We continue to see kind of negative data come out uh, of overseas economy. Uh, this morning we got the German IFO data, another day, another negative data point out of, out of Europe. Meanwhile, in the U.S., we've seen a bit more of a positive picture this week. You look at the manufacturing data, uh, the PMI data from market yesterday, you look at the fact that jobless claims are at a 50-year low in the U.S., um, you know, the economy is healthy, but our, in our view, peak economic growth is likely behind us. And that's one of the reasons that we've sort of moderated our view a bit as it relates to risk assets. So how do you explain then the move sort of out of U.S. equities into emerging markets? Well, I think certainly emerging markets were heavily beaten down last year, right? You had a 20-plus percent decline in EM. A lot of people wanted to start to nibble on emerging market assets. And there were some big there are some macro tailwinds that could be important here. The Fed does take a pause. You see the dollar continuing to moderate. It's broken below its 50-day moving average a couple of times now. Those could be possible tailwinds for emerging market equities. But for us, we actually need to see the fundamentals come back, and we need to see the earnings estimates start to bottom here and turn around. We really haven't seen that happen yet. So you say we we're past peak growth. Yes. Uh, the question then is, what's the slope down, and how far does it go? And I guess more pointedly, can we have fundamental strong growth around the world without the central bank supporting it? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, we could be engineering a soft landing here in the U.S. Um, Fed policy certainly is going to be incredibly important. And we think we're actually getting to the end of the Fed rate hike. Uh, cycle here. Uh, central banks uh, overseas certainly are not going to be raising rates anytime soon. The Fed's raised rates nine times now since 2015, and that has really important implications across, across asset classes, but particularly for fixed income. We actually like bonds more than we have over the last several years, and we think that there could be an interesting entry point, particularly in the intermediate part of the curve. Like the belly of the curve, you want to be buying? We do. Joining us. So this is something I've been predicting that the Fed would eventually have to stop raising interest rates. And what the sentiment is right now is that they're not going to raise the interest rates anymore. But if the economy continues to go down and we're seeing that there's still weakness in this market, that they're going to start cutting rates again. And it's going to become quantitative easing all over again. And once again, this is going to create another buying opportunity, especially in real estate and cryptocurrencies, because if they're going to be printing out all this extra money, you're going to have inflation. And what assets do really well with inflation? Cryptocurrency and real estate or any other commodity. But another reason why I like real estate is that if you're able to get a home loan, and once again, you have to be able to qualify for this, but if you can get a home loan for under 3%, that is basically free money. And um, I do have videos of how I recommend that you shouldn't be living in your property. If, you, if you're gonna buy a home, it should be a rental. Um, so if you are gonna live in the house, you, for sure, you should for sure be renting it, but I'll, I'll say that for later. Um, but all of this action that the Federal Reserve is going to take, and like I said, we don't know yet. They might just keep the rates they, the way they are. But if they do lower rates to stimulate the economy, um, this is going to be a clear sign that crypto will, uh, and the main reason the crypto was created is to be a hedge against inflation. So um, pay attention to what the Federal Reserve does, and let me know what your, what your thoughts are on this, and I will talk to you guys soon.